This one's gonna make me mad. But I'm not about to sit here and act like he's just the worst person in the world when America has literally been terrorizing people since the beginning. What, what about me says, ma'am, I have a red mullet. Wow, not the red mullet. Everything he said was valid. Hey guys, welcome back to the Blair White Project podcast. I know I usually start every episode with some sort of joke, some sort of funny one-liner, but I realized as I was sitting here rocking my brain to think of a joke that the fact that you're all here to listen to some tranny talk politics is the joke. You're the joke today. Uh, <laughs> but now that you're here and listening to me, you're invested. Let's go. We have new merch on BlairMerch.com. We had some ugly, busted, crusted, disgusted designs on there for years. And the amount of respect I have for y'all for buying those less than aesthetic items for years to support your bitch. I mean, I, it can't even be spoken. It can't even put into words. I love y'all. But, you know, now I put some love into the merch store, something that hasn't happened for a while. And we have new designs. I love them. They're so fun. They're fire. Like, it is what it is. So, you know, if you want to support me, which I hope you do, that would hurt my feelings if you don't, then go buy merch and let me know how it looks on you by sending a picture when you get it in the mail and I will repost it. So <laughs> raising babies, the new parenting trend where children are brought up with no gender. No, it's not a disease, baby. That sounds like some sort of super contagious, you know, skin to skin contact sort of thing. But it's actually a way in which people are really raising their kids. Every generation has like a trend, you know what I mean, with how they raise kids. And this is the gender neutral one. This is Ari, Gwendolyn and Brynifer. They are in a polyamorous relationship and they all parent Hazel and Sparrow. We have a two-year-old anti-gender baby and a 10-year-old who is non-binary. They have chosen not to disclose Sparrow's gender. We don't know it yet. Their parenting approach is controversial. I have literally received death threats. I hope karma hits you back and your kids grow up to detest you. First of all, the entire family is masked up outside. Some things you just are one plus one equals like, if you believe this, you're also gonna be the type of person to walk around in broad daylight at a park with your children. And all y'all are wearing masks, annoying. And abusive actually, annoying is a pretty light word. So it's interesting, right, that these people really think that by raising their child without a gender, they are somehow de-emphasizing gender. But what you're really doing is putting the biggest spotlight you possibly can on it. Seems to be running your entire life here. And we won't even get in the fact that y'all are a throuple. Ew. Ew. This is what happens when, unfortunately, the downfall of being open-minded comes into clear view. You can be so open-minded that your entire brain falls out, just slides on out. Raising your child, pretending as if they don't have a gender is actually quite abusive. I mean, I consider it to be the role of a parent, speaking not as a parent, but someone who witnessed pretty bad parenting in my life that actually had nothing to do with gender. So I've seen the whole spectrum and now I'm looking at y'all, seeing the other half of the spectrum as someone who's on the spectrum. <laughs> spectrum recognize spectrum okay but <laughs> really though it's like if you have a daughter it's like you're not just raising her to be some like neutral genderless like gray blob of a person you want to raise a little girl to be the best woman she can be right you want to raise a little boy to be the best man he can be right and i can see why y'all are not capable of that i can see that with just my eyes you can the other senses don't even come into play. Just my eyes see that. However, you know, raising a child with gender roles and applying them is actually, in my opinion, healthy parenting. And I could see how someone would think like, Blair, how could you think that? Because you rejected your gender role, the role of your gender, 100%. However, we live in a world with anomalies. There are going to be, there are going to be people who are not comfortable in that gender role. And so they're going to thrive outside of it. However, that doesn't change the fact that 99.9% .9 of people are going to live their best life, emotional health, mental health, physical health, by staying within that gender role, right? And you don't have to be so strict that you're like, 
I don't know, like 1800s with it, right? It's like women can wear pants. Men, shout out to y'all if y'all even want to wear a dress. But please never that floral that we just witnessed that half bald man wear, right? Never that floral, but you know, never mind the fact that all, I was gonna say, all two of the parents, all three of the parents here are all trans, right? Oh, so are your kids. What a quinket ink. It's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. And this is the kind of shit that when I try to step outside of me, right? When I try to imagine from the outside looking in on all this trans shit, this is the kind of shit that someone even stumbles on this video accidentally. To them, I would just imagine them in their mind. It's a wrap. Because when I see shit this deranged about any topic, pick a topic, it's kind of in my mind, it's like, oh, it's a wrap. Yeah, that's a mess. Throw it away. Throw it away. Not even indulging in that. Not caring. Like beyond the extent of like, oh, those poor kids. I mean, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. Sparrow. <laughs> that's the name. Not trying to be me. It's the kid's, I'm sure, real name on the books, but it's like, damn, that came out of a particular mind, right? That just sounds like the most lived out name. I don't know why. I would, Im I would imagine having a lot of personal issues if I knew anyone in my life named Sparrow. Like, I would imagine not necessarily meshing with that person, and I can't really pinpoint why that is. Because it's like, I'd probably get along with a Robin. Right? And you can even, it's not even just animals. It's like, take it to flowers. Like, I've met a couple cool daisies. Sparrow, I'm going to have some conflict with. I don't know why. I just know it. Um, and, you know, these kids are going to have conflict in their life because of these horrible three parents. You would think between all three of them, you'd think that there'd be like enough intelligence or like three of them could add up to at least one good parent. They're just not even on one. Feel bad for the kids. <clears throat> this one's gonna make me mad. This one has me feeling a very specific, fucked up kind of way. If y'all haven't noticed, you know, on the long list of deranged as shit things that libs, liberal shit libs believe these days, I would have never had on my bingo card, even as someone who's on top of how deranged they are, that defending Osama bin motherfucking Laden was going to be on there. Right? I wouldn't have thought that. I see y'all defending child abuse. I see y'all fighting harder than I've ever seen anyone fight ever to keep those nasty books in schools teaching kids how to use grinder. But Wow. You've really outdone yourselves. You, you have. So if you're not aware, this article, Wokesters for Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> Wokesters. Pretty nice, kitschy thing to call them. Commies. Commies. Crusty commies. TikTok denies Osama Bin Laden's letter to America is trending as, it, as views top 10 million. Now let me tell you something. I have something to admit to y'all. I recently re-downloaded TikTok. I'm still banned. I don't have an account. So any account you see of Blair White out there is either a fan page and they will often put that in their bio or it's a fake. So know that. I will announce if I ever come back on TikTok. I'm not. You know, I use it sometimes for finding, you know, just certain content, whatever. I can tell you as someone who has recently re-downloaded the app that I started getting randomly pro Osama Bin Laden TikToks coming up on my feed from random, annoying, woke, shit lib bitches usually in a panicked state, right? Like they put their phone on. Oh my God, you guys, I just read this letter from Osama Bin Laden and my whole world's upside down. I can see that, right? You are definitely upside down. That's the nicest way I can describe the mental state you're currently in. However, um, so that's why you know TikTok denying that it's trending is just a lie. I mean, I'm not exactly looking up Osama Bin Laden content and yet it was coming up. <laughs> like nonstop and it was just like viral after viral like 100,000 likes 500,000 likes just random people talking about how they suddenly have respect for him and it's watch this the 
actually before you even read the letter i did want to mention in reading the letter i could only think of this tweet that i saw the other day under settler colonialism any kind of resistance is branded as terrorist because the only acceptable violence is violence by the occupier so please keep that in mind when reading the letter um we really need to stop paying taxes because they ain't doing nothing but messing up everybody else and and america is the bully and it's sad because they have brainwashed us to think that we was the best country in the plan on the planet when in reality we're the worst fucking country in the planet it is just insane because this letter is so well written and so reasonably structured um in an argument like you got to present your findings you got to you know you got to state your cause all that like everything he said was valid you know what else is really well written mind comp please don't read it since y'all are so easily swayed and y'all will just read some shit and because it's worded nicely it suddenly you're having a breakthrough please don't read mind comp just gonna say that um you know this is pretty sick even though it's shocking right that People could be defending Osama bin Laden on TikTok. In some ways, it's really not, right? Because if there's any culture where this sort of deranged idea could start to sprout, it's this one, right? We have a culture where it is the popular opinion to hate America. It is the default for which people even base their politics half the time, right? It's, try to pay more attention to how much people just naturally just bash America. It's really the epitome of privilege, right? To like bash this country and feel safe doing it. And then these countries you praise, you don't even have the ability to bash the country. So who are you really fighting for, first of all? But second of all, the other thing that set the stage for this happening and why it's not so shocking is the fact that we have this rampant progressivism and leftism with no brakes, right? Just all wheels <laughs> that is encouraged in academia. It comes from academia, actually, you know, and is encouraged by the corporate press that every interaction, every human interaction, every event is to be looked through through the lens of power and through oppressor versus oppressed. That is the way they would that is the way in which they view every single interaction and every human event is that there is someone in power and there's someone that's not. And the ways in which they view power is often so skewed. The ways in which they view who is the oppressor and who is the oppressed is often so skewed, which is why they'll demonize people like landlords, right? Mention a landlord to a leftist and you're in for a treat. They're just gonna go off. As if the landlord isn't someone who worked hard to buy a house. But that's like a villain in their little, you know, perception of who the oppressor and oppressed are. Like to them, a landlord is like a billionaire. Like a person who maybe saved up their entire life savings, doesn't even own a house themselves, but bought a house, gave it to you to rent, and then they're renting again just to save up more money. That is Elon Musk to them, first of all. And they do it with skin color and race all the time. So unfortunately... Y'all may not understand this because it's so demented, but a lot of the reasons why people will defend blatantly evil groups and terrorists are literally because their skin color isn't white. It sounds stupid and it sounds like I'm oversimplifying something, but you got to remember we're talking about simple bitches. It's the reason why I will get hate and I get called Islamophobic as if Islam isn't Blairphobic, right? As if there wasn't an ideology here thousands of years before I came here that was Blairphobic, before Blair was even a thing. As if I'm the oppressor by being critical or weary or skeptical or even hating Islam as an ideology. I'm the oppressor because my skin color is this. That's literally how they think. So again, is it oversimplifying it? Yes, because I'm trying to explain to you the rationale of a simple ass bitch. Which is why, you know, to these people, you could have Michael Jordan in a room with a poor white man from the suburbs, barely making rent. And in their mind, the white man still has more power because that's how they think. Their perception of power and oppressor versus oppressed is incredibly skewed. So, and you can see it now on a bigger scale, right? This is just the end result of how they already think that Osama bin Laden is justified. And they'll, you know, they'll say things like, oh, because America is a bully. But what they're really saying is because this is a white country and that's a brown country. So they can do anything to us because we're the oppressors. That is how they think. So it's sick. 
people see the reacting to woke TikToks content as somehow like low hanging fruit or like, you know, just not the most whatever. I do it because TikTok is actually ruining the fucking world. It's a weapon by China. And you can see it clear as day with this. They are convincing young people right now that Osama bin Laden is somehow a cool guy. Do you think people in China are getting these same videos or do you think it's kind of specific to here? Getting fed that, making it trend, right? So again, this is playing off of the fact that we have this culture now and it's brought out of academia. It's brought out of, you know, corporate press. It's brought out of just popular opinion, which is fuck America. Like that's the popular opinion. And we can say fuck America in a lot of very specific, you know, areas, right? There's a lot of shit that as you get older, you start to realize like, wow, what we're led to believe about like the sovereignty of our country and about like how things work and just society in general, the matrix is not true. However, that doesn't change the fact that you're reading the letter of a mass murderer who killed, I don't even know, I'm ashamed to admit, I don't even know how many people died in 9-11 off the top of my head, but I know it's not only a couple. I know it's a lot of fucking people and it altered the history of America forever. And I know y'all, you know, I'm not saying this from a place of malice because I'm not ageist like that. Not really, but you know, I know y'all were born after that, but as someone who was in third grade and watched it go down on TV and then watched my cousin get shipped off to war because of it and then watched so many actual deceptions and you know, narratives that were false being spun out of it. Y'all are latching on to the one true narrative out of it, which is that he had something to do with killing people and that that is somehow justified. And you all sound stupid as shit saying it. I mean, you can just see the low IQ. And yes, it's making me mad because I'm not even mad at them. Like I said, questioning the matrix like that, right? Because I think that that actually is an important sort of instinct to follow is when things don't make sense. But y'all are the ones not making sense here. And there's a lot of things having to do with 9-11 that don't make sense. Lies that I wish y'all would actually pick up on, right? CIA. Osama bin Laden was actually connected to the CIA. Weird, right? <laughs> so... Sit on that and spin. <laughs> no, but really, y'all are picking up on all the wrong shit. And it's very easy to do this to a people that, again, have been culturally programmed to hate their own country, right? And y'all act like that's no big deal when you hear people's default position just kind of like, well, you know, America's fucked up. It's like, okay, well, let's put things on a scale, right? Because, like, I definitely come up here and run my tranny mouth about everything that is fucked up within America all the time. A lot of, you know, aspects of culture that are, fuck, that are fucked up. One of them being y'all. Y'all's place in the culture is fucked up. But let's keep things in perspective, right? Just because I'm bitching about things in America, guess who's not getting on a flight to Saudi Arabia? Right? I wouldn't even want to live in Mexico. You can't even drink the water. And that's just normal to people. Oh, it's so normal you can't drink the water? See, y'all will go to third world countries, right? I'm, I'm okay. We got to just, okay. Y'all will travel to third world. I'm going to use the phrase that Mr. Trump used because it applies sometimes. Shithole countries. And see, y'all are so stupid and emotionally minded that, you know, You'll perceive that as me saying the people in them are shit. No, it's the countries, right? It's the infrastructure. It's the fact that you can't drink the water. It's the fact that the buildings are falling apart. It's the fact that there are actual oppressive laws in place, that women can't drive, like those shithole countries, right? So guess who's not getting on a flight to those? And guess who's not only not getting on a flight to those out of choice, out of actually by legal banning, which is me. I legally can't even travel to half of these, I'll say it, shithole countries. And y'all will really be so warped and, like I always say, neurologically rearranged that because you sit with your college professor and y'all have a little boner for talking about how much America sucks, maybe you lost perspective of how much the rest of the world for the most part sucks. Even a lot of these, you know, tiny 
European countries that y'all love so much because they have that right amount of socialism implemented that y'all love, those are like 99% white. Even China, you know, the country that's currently reprogramming you through this app, making you think Osama bin motherfucking Laden is a good person. Even them, their culture is about the most racially homogenous culture on the planet. So y'all would really not like any of these countries, actually, even the ones that you can point to and say are better than us, because then y'all are going to get triggered because they're all white. You didn't expect that, right? Right. So, um, please stop being stupid. This article critically acclaimed... <laughs> Critically acclaimed transgender horror author hails Osama bin Laden's principled destruction of Twin Towers months after sharing her desire to slit J.K. Rowling's throat. Hmm. Transgender horror author. You are the transgender horror. Right? And they say not to judge a book by its cover. But sometimes it's just all there. Right? It's just in plain sight. So, you know, if you find yourself on the side of Osama bin Laden might have been a good guy, I mean, no one should ever take you seriously for the rest of your fucking life. And that's why I always say, we're in this society that has now also rearranged y'all to think that right-wing values, and when I say right-wing values, the way y'all perceive right-wing values is often even just classically liberal values, right? Like, even just like a speck to the right of center, like just maybe even thinking about moving to the right of center and y'all are just like, oh my God, Nazi, dangerous, harmful, domestic terrorist. That's the gag. Who is it that y'all call um, a terrorist libs of TikTok? These are the people that say the libs of TikTok Twitter account is an example of terrorism, but will run their mouths to say Osama bin Laden is justified. We're going to stop pretending like y'all make sense and we're going to stop letting y'all run shit. Because it's, it's, as I said earlier, a wrap. It's a wrap. You've revealed yourselves. You've spent every waking moment, really, of my entire life observing politics, but you really accepted an overdrive when Trump came in to demonize right-wing values in general, right? It wasn't just enough to hate Trump. You had to make every person who voted for Trump or even identifies in any way as being on the right dangerous, hateful. And y'all are on TikTok sucking Osama bin Laden's dick. Y'all are, y'all are so fucking dangerous. And people really are waking up to that. I will say there's this really interesting thing happening right now where I'm noticing people sort of culturally move a little bit to the right. Like people are kind of coming around on certain things. But the unfortunate thing about that is, I guess it's not unfortunate. It is what it is. I don't really know what to make of it, but that has nothing to do with them actually gaining like support for or increasing support for the Republican Party. That doesn't seem to be rising at all. Like, I have no hope of winning an election as a Republican, but I'm noticing people in their hearts and minds moving to the right after years and years of this shit, of transgender horror author hailing Osama bin Laden, just that in general type of shit, right? And everything that expands from that, people are kind of like, ew, what a gross culture we have all, all of a sudden out of nowhere because we didn't want mean tweets. Oh, the world's going to war now because we didn't want mean tweets, right? Um, but like I said, people aren't coming around to the Republican party because that's how useless they are, right? That's how much they have their head in the dirt, right? And this generation that is praising us home and lot on TikTok, that's the generation y'all refuse to even try to target, right? Y'all have given up on Gen Z. That's been my whole life. She Republicans don't target my, uh, you know, um, the younger generation. They just have their, you know, hopes and dreams set on these people who are five years out from croaking on keeping them in power. You gotta target the young people, right? And you gotta not be lame as shit. And again, I know the way I say things is crazy, but the Republican Party being lame as shit is a really, really big problem. It's not some petty issue. There's a reason why, and you can feel it, right? You can feel people waking up to certain things and moving right culturally and in their hearts and minds just a little bit. I feel that. But I feel their uh, support for the Republican Party dwindling even more. So that tells you something. Stop being so unesthetic. I mean, God, it's the ugliest thing in the world to call yourself a Republican. The only reason I kind of get by is because I'm cool as fuck in every other area. (laughs) But a lot of y'all are not cool as fuck at all. And then you take the, you know, mantle of being a Republican and it's just like, damn, what a lame ass person. Who wants to be like that? Stop being annoying Republicans because there's a moment happening here. You have leftists on TikTok 
going viral for praising Osama bin Laden and yet y'all are not getting any more support. That's an issue. But, you know, when I'm in office, it's it'll be different. I promise that. Give me a couple decades. It's already called the White House. Gays are thirsting <laughs> over NFL star Nick Boza in Kim K's new underwear ad. But let's not forget his homophobic past. <laughs> My God. Gays thirsted after NFL player and Skims model Nick Bosa then found out he's a Trumper. Oh my God. You would think they're writing about discovering he like committed murder in the 90s or something. Oh, he's the Zodiac killer after all. So that's the scandal. So Kim K is getting all this backlash. Miss Kim for having a Republican, God forbid, model modeling her underwear. And I just have to say as a fan of Skims, Wearing it right now. Big fan of Skims and was even more of a fan of the fact that when I saw she put an outwardly public Republican as a model. And you know that things are bad when that's like such a bare minimum thing you wouldn't even think about in the past. And that stands out. Like I knew the day that she put a Republican model on her website because people were talking about it. That's how not included Republicans or right wing thought at all is in the corporate press, mainstream media, mainstream advertising, whatever. And it's shifting. It's shifting as it should. And if you want to know his homophobic past, by the way, to get specific, here is the evidence for his homophobic past that QueerT.com <laughs> says. Unfortunately, we can't attribute any pro-LGBTQ plus quotes to Boza, who seemingly captured the most attention on gay Twitter. That's it. That's, that's the end of the sentence. Their, their evidence for him being homophobic is that they couldn't find any pro-LGBTQ plus tweets. Y'all are annoying as fuck. Another thing that people are waking up to. People are like, wait. Why are they so annoying, the LGBT mafia? Why? We gave them everything and they're more annoying than ever? Shouldn't it be like the opposite? Like they had to be a little annoying to get the rights and maybe calm down after? No, they've spiked in their level of just unbearable obnoxiousness. I mean, they are putting the forwards. And you got to remember, I know a lot of people um, are not necessarily in tune with this. But as someone who is a public figure, it is not necessarily a small deal when someone puts in print in a headline something like homophobic past, right? Like I'm numb to it because I'm always going to be that bitch they beat up on on these LGBT news websites. And I'm cool with that because I'll swing back like I am right now. However, and I'm not saying he's like being shook by it either, but to, you got to remember it's not a small deal to have words like that in a headline, just completely like destroying someone's, you know, public image like that. So annoying at best and pretty fucking slanderous at worst. I mean, that's your evidence. No pro LGBT tweets. I'm pretty sure I've never tweeted that I like ostriches. Fun fact, I think they're kind of cool. But God forbid ostrich becomes the next, you know, cultural topic next month when y'all are tired of, you know, promoting Osama bin Laden. Maybe that's the next fight, right? Ostriches. God forbid. Y'all don't find any pro ostrich tweets from me. And then suddenly I'm in a headline that I killed a bunch of ostriches or some shit. Like y'all are crazy. My God. Look at this. A Trumper and he hates Beyonce. <laughs> you are not a fan of Beyonce. Why? I don't like the fact that she has to make everything a, such a big political statement. So you mm. are not in Bay Nation, but you are <laughs> a fan of Donald Trump. Yes, right? big fan. He brings a charisma to the table that no other candidates I've seen in my lifetime. So I yeah. think we need change. You watched it, right? You you saw the whole video. You know how whenever someone gets canceled, you look up their name and the videos that kind of come up are the ones people are canceling them for. He said he doesn't like Beyonce's music. And he said Trump has charisma, which is something you should probably be able to admit, even if you hate him, right? A certain charisma. Just like how y'all said Osama Bin Laden is well-written. And, um, you know, I don't really like Beyonce's music either. Oh! In fact, I struggle to find music from her that I like. I like that one song, Pretty Hurts. That's 
that's a song I can relate to because it is actually very difficult being beautiful. <laughs> and so I related, bitch. And I was like, okay, Beyonce, you did your big one with that. But I just can't get past the fact that every song from her was better when it was in Destiny's Child. But that's that millennial in me, right? That's that old bitch in me that y'all want to call. You know, y'all call me the OB, the old bitch. I get it. I'm old. But guess what? I'm old enough to remember Osama Bin Laden's a bad guy, not a good one. So I'm not exactly insecure about getting older. Because if this is what being young is, I think Osama Bin Laden's a good guy. I don't, I'm good with my age. In fact, let's kick it up a notch, right? Y'all are really some sick, twisted bitches. And uh, leave this man alone just because he doesn't like Beyonce, right? Newsome. Lies about, <laughs> I don't know why. I have a lot of trauma just with the word Newsome. Y'all know I lived in California during lockdowns and that's another thing. You know, I know people, one of my best friends was born in Cuba. And so when he talks about someone like Fidel Castro, when he talks about someone, you know, just the shit that went on. And then he sees college students praising Fidel Castro. You know, he goes, he has an aneurysm every time. He gets very upset. You know, he's got that Cuban in him, so he just gets red. You know, as someone who spent my life living in California, my entire life until recently moving to Texas a couple years ago, and lived all throughout the lockdowns, you know, when I see people talking about how Newsom might make a good president, wow. I mean, that's pretty sick. So Newsom lies about Tennessee city law banning being gay and gets dragged. First of all, Daily Wire, interesting headline, gets dragged. Who, who wrote this? It's just funny to me how like, and this is where, you know, everyone calls me a hater or whatever. But it's like, I really do like the gays in the sense of like the old school gays, the not like political, lived out, gross, like you know, communist gays. Like, I like the old school gays. And it's so interesting how when you're tuned in and, and tapped into like language and slang, you know that like a lot of our current slang and vernacular literally comes from that and people just don't know it. So this is like, so this is a super right wing website talking about get dragged. That's like a gay phrase. Whenever I see like, you know, conservative people talking about, ooh, the T, I'm like, the T? which is where that initial thing got turned into T-E-A once it became straighter. If you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? If you're old enough again, the OB, the old bitch, to see how slang kind of comes in and out. It's like the gay slang really sets up a lot of how we actually talk. So you got the Daily Wire talking about getting dragged. Wow. Um, comment if you've noticed that. Throwing shade. That was gay. White gay men. Drag queens. And then black women, and now everyone says throwing shade. I see straight, white, conservative people saying throw shade. Anyways, I need to throw some shade right now because Newsom, again, lied, lied, liar, about Tennessee city law banning being gay, right? Just how drag was banned, was banned in Tennessee, right? They said that, oh, they're reserving it to over 18 clubs, drag being banned. So he got community notes. And it says, the linked article refers to an ordinance passed in June 2023. This ordinance prohibits sexual conduct as defined in the city code. At the time, the city code did include homosexuality in this definition. However, in 2023, homosexuality was removed. And you want to know what the ordinance was? That you can't fuck in public. So they said, no one can fuck in public. And Newsom said, oh, they're banning being gay. Is that what being gay is to you? Just being a nasty public fucker? Because God bless gay men. I mean, y'all are really horny as shit. And sometimes y'all gotta just open the floor to talk about that. Like gay men are just so horny. Like all my gay friends, it's like they're just constantly looking for dick. And that's fine. But at the same time, <laughs> they're not all just fucking in public. So if you hear that fucking in public was banned, and your mind goes to, oh my God, they're oppressing gay people. I mean, what do you really think of gay people? At some point also, we're talking a lot about waking up, right? Some of y'all are going further into sleep. Osama Bin Laden's a good guy, couldn't be more asleep. But a lot of the LGBT community, and no, I didn't put the Q plus, 
LP, QZ, BBQ. Like, I didn't. A lot of the LGBT are waking up that this commie shit is not necessarily in their favor. Because number one, you look at any commie country, y'all aren't exactly accepted. And also, a lot of these leftist leaders gaslight the shit out of y'all, lie to y'all, only care about your vote. Interesting how y'all are so comfortable saying Trump only cares about your vote. He doesn't want to help people, but yet other politicians that y'all like, Gavin Newsom, but Gavin Newsom cares. Okay, so why is he lying to y'all then? Because he's not stupid. He's very smart. He's very maniacal. He's very intelligent. Very well written, as the libs are saying. So he knows he's lying to you, but that fear mongering locks you even more so into a blue vote. They're attacking you, gay people. Look. Being gay is banned in Tennessee. You better vote for blue. I mean, that's clear as day to me, right? Clear as day. Just like all these states that have banned kids transitioning, half of the headlines will say, transitioning banned in Missouri. With no regard to clarify within the headline, even though it would even in some ways make a more salacious headline. But it increases that fear because it makes you feel like they're coming for all trans people rather than putting some safeguards in place so the children aren't harmed in the trans conversation, right? So they're banning public fucking. And y'all really believe Newsom when he says that means that they're banning being gay? Are you crazy? Are you stupid? We don't even live currently in a culture that would permit that. Literally, no one is okay with being gay, being banned anymore. Like no one would do that. No one would be okay with that. If it was a real thing, there'd be more of an upset and not just Gavin Newsom running his crooked, nasty mouth. Nasty. He's a nasty motherfucker. You lived in California during lockdowns? I don't got to say anything else, if you know. Living in Cubafornia for a couple years. Oh, military's on the beach. Tanks in front of your house. But we're the free state, and Florida is doing it wrong by letting their people go outside. Look how oppressive they are in Florida, letting people go outside. We're all locked in our homes. You go to the beach, you have to talk to the guard with the gun. Because fresh air is not your right at all. All right. This is an interesting one. Kat Von D is on fire for Jesus after abandoning witchcraft. First of all, I didn't know she did witchcraft for real. Like, I, I didn't think that just dressing in black was necessarily doing witchcraft, but that's crazy to hear. Kat Von D, the famous tattoo artist, just got baptized into Christianity. But not only that, she completely renounced her association with witchcraft and the occult. She threw out her books of witchcraft saying, why would I want to invite these things into my or my family's life? So... I like Kat Von D a lot. And a lot of y'all hate her, but a lot of y'all are wrong. <laughs> that just is what it is. She's changed her life and she claims that it's the best thing for her that she's ever done. Happier than ever in life. And uh, a lot of us that are sort of in the right wing social media space have kind of seen this coming for a while because, you know, whenever someone of a mainstream celebrity starts following us one by one on tw on Twitter or Instagram, whatever, we kind of all are like, did you see that? Did she follow you too? Oh my God, is she secretly a, you know, it's like, it's that. Fun fact, she actually sent me shoes from her shoe line and uh, she had me take a picture and she reposted on her website all the time on her social media for her shoe line. And so, you know, she supports me. I support her. I like her. And anytime I see someone making such a big shift like this, and it can be anything, right? This is just an example, you know, finding Christianity or God or whatever. I'm not there and I don't necessarily relate to that. But, you know, anytime someone breaks free of any mentality they had before, finds a new one and is overall better for it, I just so support that because we're clearly living in a culture right now where everyone's finding new mentalities that take everything back, right? How all these new progressive perspectives are actually very regressive, right? Like having separate graduations for black and white students because we're progressive. When in reality, that's actually going back to Jim Crow, segregation, but with a new label. 
that's regressive, right? Like how all these views on gender are often very regressive. So I'm transitioning my son because he likes pink as if that's not a very regressive stereotype about gender. So, you know, I don't, again, relate to this. However, I did want to get into a little bit, right? And when I say a little bit, I mean like really only a little bit how the older I get, maybe some of y'all saw my tweet the other day, the older I get, I do feel myself getting a little more spiritual. And you can make of that what you will. I know that's a very loaded word for a lot of people. And depending on who you are, that's going to mean something radically different. It might even mean witchcraft. No, I don't play with that shit. See, the demonic shit, the witch shit, I don't like it. Because even though I've never been spiritual, I have always actually been able to sort of sense when someone is like an evil ass bitch around me or really doing some weird voodoo shit around me. I swear to God. I've always had that as a sense. So definitely not witchcraft. Right. But, you know, it's interesting. I feel like I spent sort of the first couple decades of my life in like constant fight or flight mode. Not even I feel like I know that. That's just what it was. And I feel like a lot of people seek God when you're like struggling to survive and have a hard life or whatever. And that that is something that they do. Like that's common. Like, oh, something bad happens. Find God. Like that's a common narrative. Right. But I think what people don't talk about is I think that there's probably also a narrative that people don't have the capacity to seek things like that. It doesn't have to be God, just spirit spiritualism in general. Right. You know, higher power, not even like an omniscient one, just like a something other than physical. Right. A lot of people don't have it within their capacity to seek that out when they are in that fight or flight survival mode or have a hard life because they're trying to survive, bitch. What did I look like trying to figure out the secrets of the universe <laughs> and my spirit when I'm struggling to keep the body alive and I'm like freaking out all the time and like going through a hard childhood and shit? I didn't have the capacity for it. So as I'm getting older, I'm just noticing like as I'm sort of calming down a little bit from the fight or flight that I was in for the first half of my life. And I'm able to sort of witness the ways in which the world works, you know, in ways that are not necessarily one plus one equals two and not necessarily explainable, right? Because I'm a very sometimes autistic ass person, very literal person. Like this noise is happening because I am tapping it with my nail and it is a physical object. Like I'm very literal, right? on the spectrum, like I said. So, you know, I feel like when you start getting older and able to pick up on how things work in a way that aren't so literal and are maybe whatever, you just start to open your mind a little bit. And y'all cannot take my words and make it something that it's not. Do not try to get me to go to church. God bless you, literally and figuratively. I'm not even a pun. God bless you if you want to take me to church. I'm not trying to go to church. Anytime I talk about spirituality, everyone's like, you know, I live in San Antonio, I live in Waco and we want you to come to our thing and speak to our, I'm like, I'm not speaking to a church, <laughs> not speaking to a church, baby. But you know, I'm on my own very personal sort of spiritual journey. And I feel like the best part of it is it's not, you know, being influenced by anyone in the sense of I didn't stumble upon some new group. I didn't, you know, get, I didn't join some church. I didn't have someone in my life trying to teach me about whatever. It's literally just happening in real time, very naturally within my own body. And I don't even talk about it at all. This is like the first time I've really talked about it. So that's how I know it's genuine and I want to keep it that way. So please don't place anything anything on me. But, you know, it is what it is. Shout out to uh, Miss Kat Von D. Love the shoes, sis. And now, because I haven't had enough things within this podcast episode to uh, enrage me, we're going to move on to the segment that is known as reacting to book TikToks. So this one, y'all really wanted me to react to. It looks like uh, he's having a uh, nice feast. She, all she, she, her. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. But it was not all good. Hi. I use she, her pronouns. I'm not sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it, it. it's like a knife in the heart. I also, I did specifically ask ahead of time not to be called sir. Yeah, I'm just gonna go. Okay, okay. the so sweet water starts at, yes, okay. Not, I mean, not, I, I'm so sorry, I apologize. It's just always like a knife. It always hurts every single time. I was wondering if there's a manager I could talk to about something that happened. Yeah, I, I was called sir. Oh, okay. It just really sucks every time. You're a Karen, a Darren. A Darren. 
And I'm not even going to feel bad about saying that because if you feel like you can step out in public with a five o'clock shadow covering your entire face and say, it's she in that voice. It's she. And also somehow compartmentalize that and think that you're not the problem in the situation. You're the problem. I'm here to let you know that. So let's just wrap our little demented brains around that part. But also, this is so clearly just a loser who's never had an ounce of power in his life, who finally found an ideology that allows him to enact power on other people. And the same way that he's like, it's like a knife in the heart. Yeah, and you're really getting a kick out of putting a knife to all these employees' throats, right? These minimum wage workers at best, right? Listen, I understand this is like going to sound a little bit hoity-toity, but I've never actually worked in a restaurant or service industry or food industry. So I've heard that they don't make shit. I've heard that it's actually like should almost be illegal how little they make. Like I've heard that my whole life. So if that's true, you're really turning up on a bunch of people barely making it, barely surviving because they used a word you didn't like when the claim is that it's so painful, you would think that the action would be not putting it on camera, right? Because if some, if something's actually that painful and if you're actually, you know, getting, because here's the thing, when you're trans, a trans woman, a real trans woman, it's like, he's correct in saying it, it is like a knife in the heart if you're going to get called he. I mean, that is like, wow. So I did all this, getting called he still, wow. But the other side to that, not the other side, the other part of that is that you also don't really want to talk about that. I promise you that's how they think. I've had a lot of trans women, real trans women friends in my life, and like I've been around them at certain times where maybe they get misgendered or whatever, and I do see the pain that they felt from that, and the way that every single one of them has coped with it is pretending like it didn't happen. I'm not kidding. So for you to put it on camera, you're very proud of it. You're very excited to go on TikTok, that little jerk-off session, right? And... It's transparent and you're a bully. You're a bully. You are going and you are baiting people into a situation of offending you, right? And when I say that, part of that is the fact that you've made no effort to transition. That, and then you get mad at people for saying, she, that's baiting them. That's baiting them. That's off putting all of the responsibility on you to go through any transition. I'm not even going to say a successful transition, any transition. And you are placing that responsibility that you're so scared to feel because you know you're not really trans. I don't care anymore. I can tell. I don't care anymore. I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing this game of Blair White's judging who's trans or not. Yep. That's what she's doing now. And I don't care. This person, in my opinion, subject to be proven wrong, in some cases, this one it won't. This is not a, a trans person. Don't care. Be mad. Comments I'm angry. Get all hyped up. Don't care. And, you know, because of that, that's how I know that this is just a bully, a psychopath, trying to enact power on people because he's felt powerless his entire life. Yep. Yep. People want to say that I don't experience PMS symptoms. But I've been cramping incredibly bad all day. And at some point, my pain tolerance went away. And it started hurting incredibly bad for the last two hours. So much so that it made me go and throw up three times. Milk of magnesia, babe. Get a douche. A little fleet. What's it called? The fleet enema? You just have to poop. And you are subjecting the internet to hearing about how bad you can't poop. There are solutions to this. Constipation has been, it's a <laughs> species long problem. We've always had that kind of issue, but there are, there are some fixes, babe. Milk of magnesia. Postmates it. You don't gotta go in the store anymore. It can come right to your house. Don't make eye contact with the delivery driver though. Have him drop it off on the door. Don't, don't do the whole like, hand it to me. No one wants to hand you milk of magnesia, but you really do just need to take a shit. 
you're not having a period. If there's one thing that I wish white people understood, it is this. Your whiteness is the heaviest thing about you. It is so heavy that it outweighs any and all other marginalizing identities. Now, this is not to say that other identities aren't heavy. This is not to say that other identities aren't hard to carry. But it is to say that your whiteness in a white supremacist society like the United States is the key to care, empathy, dignity, support. You know, far too many people, they go to therapy and then they learn all these new words, right? They develop this whole new vernacular from their psychotherapists, which is why suddenly there's this explosion of people using the word gaslight, people using the word narcissistic abuser, you know, how the word abuse has suddenly dwindled down to like just the smallest infraction against your sensibilities. Like someone saying he, when you sound like this, right and people just need to understand that just because you learn some new words in therapy doesn't mean they're applicable all the time so for you to sit up on camera like you're in a therapy session talking about your whiteness is heavy you're a little too heavy on the xanax babe we're gonna need to perk up observe the world and it's a lot broader than just your therapist's office and the psychobabble isn't cutting it for an articulate educational tiktok that you are trying so clearly desperately here to make because to invoke that therapy language, you're gaslighting me. Done. Y'all really do need to get that in check. I mean, I'm not saying that there's no real meaning to gaslighting. Like, it is really a thing that happens. Like, it's a genuine thing that happens. There are really narcissistic abusers. There are really, you know, all these things. However, every one of your exes is a narcissistic, ab narcissistic abuser. All of them. Everyone in your life is gaslighting you. Really? Okay. Well, I know that <laughs> far be it for me to introduce this new concept that you are the problem, right? And that every person around you isn't an abuser. Maybe look into that. Recent college grad has breakdown over working a job. We are doomed. That's the caption here. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table. Like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it, it'd be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here. Like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 615 earliest. And then like I don't have time to do anything. I don't I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like, I don't have energy to work out. Like, that's out the window. Like, I'm so upset. Oh, my God. So, this girl has been getting dragged left and right over social media. And I think it's a little bit unfair. Now, hear me out. So, is it easy to, when you are so jaded by life and living in this rat race we call society... Is it so easy to look at, you know, a newbie to the game, right? And say, look at this, you know, pathetic little girl who doesn't understand that we all have to like work to survive. And yeah, that's that's the low vibrational, real easy response to have to this little girl who's clearly just, you know, for the first time, you know, experiencing that rat race. But that doesn't make the rat race necessarily a positive thing, does it? Now, y'all know, I believe in hard work. I believe in manifesting your dreams. I believe in, oh, that bad word capitalism that's me i like money i like making it i like spending it but you know that doesn't mean that inherently every aspect of what it takes to do that is necessarily good for the human soul and or you know conducive to a happy life and i am not mad at her like all the comments are like welcome to the real world little girl okay so does that make it the good world, the properly set up world, the positive world? Not necessarily, right, bitch? <laughs> and I know that like on paper, you would think I'm attacking this person too, but I'm really not. So she toughen up a little bit? Yeah. You need to use this energy to figure out how to get out of the rat race, right? Like that's the positive movement, right? Don't get jaded like these old hoes who are like, welcome to the rat race. You're stuck here. Don't listen to them. That's a crab in a bucket ass mentality. And you will always be in that rat race. If you believe them, do not fucking believe them. I'm actually getting mad now. Do not fucking believe them. All these salty ass replies I'm reading. Oh, welcome to the real world. Enjoy. Ha <laughs> ha. Gen Z finally getting a taste of. 
listen to them in the sense of look at how fucking miserable they are. Don't do that. Don't get jaded with it. Don't get comfortable with it. Do what you have to do to get what you need out of the rat race, right? Like you're going to have to do that commute, sis. You're going to have to go to that job and you're going to have to fucking put up with that piece of shit boss you have. But use that energy to become your own boss. Save up that coin you're getting from them, even if it seems like such a small amount. Put it towards something that enables you to become your own boss. If you have to break it into little tiny steps, then do that. But do that. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like this mentality. I've never liked it. Like, I am not ashamed to say that I am not someone who was built for living for working a nine to five. If I was built for that or meant for that or like was happy doing that, I'd be doing that, right? And I too remember feeling I had one job <laughs> for before the life I have now. I had one job, real job was working at a clothing store. And, um, you know, working is a very interesting word to use for that because I didn't like work. Like I never learned how to use the cash register. I would tell customers flat out, like I'm not getting that shirt off the wall for you because I'm tired. Like I swear to God, it was actually comical. And the reason why I didn't get fired was because I had this boss and she was just so obsessed with me because she thought I was so fabulous. That was like my young little um, gay boy era where I was still like, I was on the way to becoming Blair. So I was like, getting a little pretty, but also like a boy. So like she was a fag hack. She loved it. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't get fired. So, but, but the point is I relate to this girl. It's like when, when I was doing that and I was like, wait, this is what life is. Fuck no. Hell no. I'm gonna figure some other shit out. And I did. And I want her to figure other shit out too. I believe your tears. Cause I remember them myself. Let them be real. And get the fuck out of the rat race. Figure out how. Because these old hoes that are replying, welcome to the real world, how? Huh? That's sick. I mean, that's demented. Like, they're miserable, so they're like, welcome to being miserable with me. No. No. I believe in you, bitch. Disgusting. I just went through the Taco Bell drive through because I'm a whore for Taco Bell. And do you know how they greeted me? They said... Hello, ma'am. And then after handing me my food, said, thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Bitch, what, what about me says ma'am? I have a fucking red mullet. Wow, not the red mullet. Sis. And I'm just being real. Sis. Durr. If you really wanted to know and answer that question, what about me is giving she, um... You know, you have a very minimal amount of yourself on camera here, right? It's a very tight shot. It's just here up. Your, your breasts aren't even in frame, right? And yet, every single aspect is giving she, her. So, you know, that might be the answer. All the things, actually. And we need to get back to, just like I was telling this bitch who was crying in the last one, that I believe in her. And I said it quite angrily, right? That communicates that you can care about someone and try to give them good advice and still sound like a bitch, right? I'm always gonna sound like a bitch giving people advice when I care. We gotta bring back, and the trans community used to have this, tough love, we actually used to have it. They told you when you looked a mess and they were actually quite rude about it and quite mean. They would tell you, bitch, you look clocky as shit. Do not go out in that, no. If you ask them what part of me gives off man, they will they will read you down boots. One by one. You're balding. You have no tits. You have no hip. Like they will read you. And that can be seen as toxic and it is. But there's a certain level of toxicity in giving love and good advice that is actually as healthy. See, it's this weirdo shit where y'all don't tell people the truth that leads little girls like this to go to Taco Bell with that voice and that red mullet and thinking that is enough to suffice and make her pass as a man. Whereas if she had a trans person in her life giving her the real, they would say, bitch, you sound like Dory the fish. The red mullet, a mullet's actually a unisex haircut. So maybe if you're really ser serious about this being a man thing, you wouldn't rest at that comfortable place of unisex haircut. Maybe just go straight to man haircut, right? I mean, God. 
Not to mention you're bitching about it on camera in a very feminine way. Oh my God. It's giving she her. And that's called love to tell you that. See these bitches in your life, these fake ass trans people in your life or anyone in your life who's telling you, yeah, that Taco Bell employee, he was wrong. You totally give man. They don't like you like that. They don't like you enough to tell you you're giving she her. They don't care. I care. Interesting word. Pretty. Gotta elevate. I'm trying. It's just like, my God. It would be like me making a TikTok talking about ugly bitches talk like this. It's like, it, it's not hitting because I'm not ugly. You're... That's that literal shit, right? That's me on the spectrum. That's the autism. I'm expecting the lyrics to literally match her when quite clearly it's not, it's not suitable. It's not a suitable word to use in reference to this. You're a sick bitch. And here's why you're a sick bitch. You are, just like the caption says, I agree with it, getting euphoria over this, getting so lit. So excited over confusing these kids. Why these people continue to get hired, I really don't know. You would think that people would. I feel like the theme of this episode has been like people waking up to certain things. School boards. Wake up. If she looks like this, don't hire her. That's that groomer shit, literally. It doesn't always have to be diddlery. This woman might not be a diddler at all. But she's still a demon and she's still demented and she's still grooming in another way, which is teaching kids false information about gender. And it's fucking sick because it's compensating for the fact that she's confused, confused about her own shit and she's putting that shit. This is the entire so many dots connecting. This is the entire leftist ideology responsibility. Someone else take it. She's doing it to kids. I'm confused about my shit. Kids have to be. I look like a man, mm, the server's wrong. I look like a woman, mm, the Taco Bell employee's wrong. Just saying. And again, that's called love letting you know that because that might be crucial information for you to hear, Miss Vomit Hair. It might be crucial, Miss Puke, for you to hear that this has all just been a psyop you created in your own mind because then you might actually be able to escape it. You created the problem. It's not something that came on to you, which means you can probably fix it, right? Starting with that hair. And with that being said, that is the end of today's episode. I love you guys. I actually do. You know, y'all, people say that shit and it's like, oh, I love my subscriber, subscribers, my supporters, my fans. No, I really do. You know, y'all see me and I see you. And we're going all the way to the White House. Follow me on Twitter and X because... You need to subscribe to this channel as well as my main channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.